Hey folks, welcome back. This teaching is going to be specifically dealing with the ICT ATM method. Okay, points of focus in this module. We'll be introducing the ICT ATM method. The ATM in bearish conditions with targets and stop placement. The ATM in bullish conditions with targets and stop placement. Okay, introducing the ICT ATM method. All right, it's a standalone price action pattern. The pattern capitalizes on stop runs. You can find this pattern on the 60 minute chart. It's relatively easy to spot and you can do it quickly in finding it because it's pretty much a, well, it's a rejection level. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. And it's pretty easy to trade. And the wonderful thing is, it's a complete trading model for setups. Okay, so we're going to look at the ATM in bearish conditions. Now, I want you to take a look at this diagram on the right-hand side. Okay, and let that image burn in for a couple of minutes. And as I'm talking to you, just kind of like study what it's depicting. And I want you to think about how when we start as traders, generally the idea of support and resistance is rather early in our introduction to technical analysis. And the problem I found when I first started as a trader is what support resistance levels do I use? It's, I mean, there's so many you could possibly have on your chart. Which ones should I be focusing on? So my work has been trying to simplifying that. So that way I could teach it to my children. Uh, because of this, I've been able to make pretty detailed tutorials for people around the world to learn from. And I've developed a little bit better ability to teach over the years doing it. But initially when I first started, I gave a lot of information and it was overkill. So this teaching is going to be rather brief, but it's, again, very dense in its information. So again, looking at this diagram here, I want you to think about what would constitute these turning points. And I'm sure if you were to go through charts, you could see patterns like this that are very similar in different time frames. The time frame that I teach to find this pattern on is the hourly chart. The reason why I like to look for it on the hourly chart is because it gives me flexibility to draw down to a lower time frame to refine risk to a smaller amount while still keeping the maximum reward still in sight and also uh, the hourly to me is clean enough in terms of a time frame that it, it promotes a little bit longer term horizon for the setups now granted an hourly chart is not long term but you can see a lot of the levels that you would see otherwise on a four hour or daily if you know what you're looking for so I kind of like want to ingrain in your mind in this teaching how we can use key support resistance levels and what makes these levels key. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your 60-minute chart, and this can work on any asset class. Okay, so I'm going to be using Forex for this discussion, okay, and the scope is in demo trading only, but you can also do you can also do demo accounts with futures contracts, commodity stocks bonds and the like so you start with a 60 minute chart pretty simple straightforward you don't do have you don't have to do a whole lot of top-down analysis because the pattern is self-sufficient so you're looking for a 60 minute chart for a key high to form and what makes it a key high is you want to see it create this initial short-term high and then it runs through it and then it breaks down Okay, it's going to break a swing low right here. When price trades through that, that's when it becomes a valid pattern. It does not become a valid pattern until we get below this swing low here. Okay, so imagine price action kind of creating a check mark. Okay, you have a little short term high here and it makes a check like that. Okay, when that check mark gets surpassed by price action 
When it trades back up to that, that's the setup. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So ideally, what makes this setup stronger is if this whole price swing is part of a two-stage move. In other words, we have a short-term high that's ran out, and we have a short-term high here, and it runs out. Okay, so this move should be ideally the second move up taking on a short-term high. That means we're pretty much overbought from a technical standpoint without the necessity of any indicators. So we're focusing again on this short-term low here, and it has to break below that. Again, part of a two-stage move higher, and we're going to be waiting for price to retrace back to the swing low that forms prior to the key high forming. Now, what makes this high key is the fact that we have taken out a short-term high, but the low immediately after that short-term high is violated. It's broken down. So in, in essence, this is a break in market structure here. And all we're doing is waiting for a retest of that same old support level now becomes resistance. So now when we see this in proper context, we can classify and quantify real support and resistance because we're incorporating the idea of a stop run above this short-term high. And then anyone that's long here, they're going to have a stop below this low. So they run through those stops. Price comes back up to this level here. We've already rejected price above this short-term high above number two. So this level here, should promote selling and it should stave off any real buying because we've broken market structure with this swing low with this drop down so this would be a nice area to look for shorts and then once we have that what we look for on this entry pattern we have to frame obviously profit and risk so we first have to determine what's our potential profit what do we hope to make so we look for a swing low where in this case it would be sell stops resting below that short term low and we would target from our entry point at this old low down to that level just below the old low that's what we are aiming for that's our target if you will the risk is going to be defined by one or two pips above the key high okay or the rejection high sometimes price can go above this short term low a little bit it's better if it doesn't, but don't be af you know, afraid if it goes above a little bit. Your stop loss is up there to do its work. It's a demo account. Don't lose any sleep over it. Okay. So we're looking for the framework of this entry point to this as our objective and our stop loss protecting our overall position. Okay, so let's take a look at it in actual price action. Okay, we can see price creating a short-term high here. Price runs through it. We have another short term high here. Price runs through that. And then it rejects being above this short term high and trades down below this low. And price comes back up and retrades to it. Okay, so this candle here violates it. And then we come right back up to it and trades right into that same level. As soon as that happens, that is a sell scenario, okay, or a shorting opportunity. We're going to be looking for a move below this low. Our risk is defined by the high, so that's 65 pips risk to make from this entry point down to the stops. That's not bad. You can take that trade. It's not, you know, barn burning, okay? If we drop down into a 15 minute time frame, we can take that same insight in here and zero in and use our trusty optimal trade entry pattern to reduce some of the risk. So now we can reduce that 65 pip stop loss down to 20 pips. Notice also that we have a Fibonacci extension of 300%, which takes us right below that low where our sell stop target would be. So now we're going to take a look at an example of the bullish condition of an ATM. Again, look at the scenario here in this crude depiction. <laughs> Again, we're going to be scanning the price action on a 60 minute chart, for key low to form and a short-term swing high broken to the upside. That's gonna be this right here. So we're looking for a low that's violated and then we trade right back above the short-term high right here. So in other words, what we're looking for, it's kind of like a crooked little number seven, okay? 
And when that is violated on the upside, when price comes back down to it, that's what we're hunting. So ideally, this is going to be part of a continued swing lower. We have a swing low that's violated here, and then we have a swing low that's violated here. So it's like a two-stage move lower of breaking old support, old support. So now we're really oversold technically without any necessity of needing any indicators to, to tell us that. So here's our two scale drop down. And we're going to be waiting for price to retrace back to the swing high broken prior to the key low forming again. That's this here. And we zero in right there. That's our setup for a long. So we'll look for our opportunity for framing our potential reward. Again, we're going to be hunting buy stops above this swing high here. And the stop loss is below here. So our entry to our stop is our risk. And our entry to the buy stops above here is our potential profit or reward. All right, we're going to take a look at an example in the bullish condition. All right, so here is price action on an hourly chart. You can see we have one support level broken, another area of support broken, and then we have an old low violated aggressively, and then price trades back above it right here. When we see that, this retest of that old high, that's where we're hunting along. So if that's our entry, and this is our stop loss, we're risking 140 pips to make 225 pips. Buy stops are our target here. Now, that may not be an ideal scenario for you, and it may not be something that fits your risk appetite. So we can now drop down into a 15-minute time frame and try to get that same 225 pips with a little bit lower stop loss. So here we are on a 15 minute time frame. I've zoomed in here in that same little area of looking to be a buyer. We're going to be now removing all of that risk down to 80 pips. So we can have a stop loss just below this old low here. Okay. So we have this low to this high here coming back down into that level. So we're trying to give ourselves a little bit more of a better risk to reward model here. Right away, we're almost at uh, three to one. So that's improved, but watch what we do when we zoom in a little bit more. We're going to actually go down to a five minute chart now and still see if we can get that 225 pips, but with a smaller stop loss. Okay, so now we have a five minute chart. Again, that same little area, that green circle. We're zoomed in here. And now I'm doing this, doing an optimal trade entry long, running the FIB from the body's lowest opener close to the highest opener close in this swing high. And it gives us a beautiful little optimal trade entry long, right at the same level we'd be lo looking for that scenario to unfold at. And now we can reduce that stop down to 20 pips, but still looking and hunting 225 pips, or in this case becomes 11 to 1 reward to risk model. So what we've done is we've looked for a key turning point. We've identified the key levels relative to runs on liquidity, stops, and we use the targets in the form of a stop run as well. We can use the optimal trade entry to zero in and reduce the risk, but still keep the possible potential reward still the same as we would have used from an hourly setup. So the 225 pips is still available to us with a 20 pip stop loss. Now, granted, you have to hold it for a while, but this is what it looks like on a five minute zoomed out. You end up getting that entire move, but it takes little bit of time to get there but nonetheless this is how we can use the ATM method to get high probability setups trading key support and resistance levels again 225 pips is available with a 20 pip stop loss hope you enjoyed this presentation if you like these types of teachings you can find more at the inner circle trader.com